Good evening, folks, and welcome to Heavy Metal Talk. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Gershon, and this week we are ranking Slayer's albums. <laughs> uh, big fan of Slayer, have been ever since 1994, uh, back when Divine Intervention came out. So a little bit of a late bloomer, but <laughs> that was the first album I bought, and that's when I really started getting into them. I listened to all their back catalog and every album ever since. I've seen them live many times in all incarnations of the band. Um, I did see the whole original lineup once. Uh, that was the God Hates Us All tour when Paul Bostaff left and Dave Lombardo came in to replace him. So I saw all the original members. And I saw several times I saw the Jeff Hanneman, Paul Bostaff lineup. And I saw the final incarnation of the band twice uh, with uh, Gary Holt coming in to replace Jeff Hanneman and uh, Paul Bostaff returning. <laughs> And I did see the final tour, so-called final tour, the final campaign. Uh, but eh, they just announced that they're going to have a few shows. So like a few reunion shows at these big festivals. So I don't know how big this return is going to be, but we'll see. Because uh, Kerry King has his own solo project going on. So I don't know what the future is for Slayer, but... Uh, we're here to rank their albums, so let's get into it, shall we? So, the tier list is Reign Supreme is the top tier. The second tier is Slaytanic. <laughs> uh, the third tier, sort of the middle of the road, is Spills Blood. And uh, down towards the bottom is Cold Cadaver. <laughs> And then we have the bottom of the barrel, Deadly Dud. <laughs> uh, so, let's get started with the first release from Slayer, the debut of Slayer back in 1983, and that is Show No Mercy. So where are we going to put Show No Mercy? I am going to put Show No Mercy at Slaytanic. So not quite my favorite album by Slayer, but... It certainly is a classic, and it is a great debut. Uh, I feel like it established like the core elements of Slayer, uh, whereas to me, they didn't fully become Slayer, uh, the Slayer that we all know and love until Hell Awaits for me. Uh, to me, this was kind of the bare beginnings. Uh, they're just trying to find out who, uh, who they are, you know. They obviously had a lot of influence in there from bands like Venom and Hellhammer and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, a lot of influence on Black Sabbath and uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and you can see that in here. To me, they didn't quite have the complete Slayer identity. Uh, you certainly had, with the lyrics and the imagery... Uh, they certainly established that part of things. Uh, but it had a real raw sound to it. Uh, had kind of a, a rough production value. Um, but it's got that classic old school thrash feel to it. Although they become a lot more thrashy uh, later on, I think. It weren't quite as heavy here. It was almost like heavy metal rather than thrash metal per se. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a great, there's some classics in there. You got um, Die by the Sword, you got Evil Has No Boundaries, you got Metal Storm, Face the Slayer, you got Black Magic. So definitely some classics in there for sure. Uh, real solid debut for Slayer. Uh, back in 1983, which is a huge year for thrash metal, you had... Metallica's debut with Kill 'Em All. You had Megadeth's debut. So yeah, and you had Slayer's debut. Uh, next up to me, I am including the Haunting the Chapel EP. Yeah, I know it's an EP, but to me, it's a very important part of the history of the band because it's an important part of the progression of Slayer. To me, this was another big step towards becoming 
the Slayer that we all know and love, that complete Slayer sound. Uh, to me, this was the next step in their evolution. And I'm also going to put this at Slate Tanner because you got some classic Slayer tunes in there that are just staples of the live show, like Chemical Warfare, Captor of Sin, and of course the title track, Haunting the Chapel. To me, it sounded darker, more sinister, more evil, more satanic, you know, uh, and a lot heavier, more thrashy sounding, you know. Uh, to me, it's definitely the next level, you know. But the next album is where they truly became Slayer in my mind, and that is Hell Awaits. And I am putting Hell Awaits at Reign Supreme, baby. Yes, Hell Yeah, Hell Awaits is awesome. <laughs> Uh, to me, this is where Slayer became Slayer. Nobody sounded like this, you know. Uh, they just had it all here. It's thrashy as hell. It's evil as all hell. This is the most evil Slayer has ever sounded. I mean, uh, it's still got that rough, raw feel of like Shona Mercy and Haunting the Chapel. It's still got it got that rough production value. Some might say that adds to the charm of it, and it. It kind of does in a way, you know. Uh, it's just got that nasty, raw sound, you know. Uh, man, this album is just loaded with classics. Obviously, the child track, Hello Waits. Uh, At Dawn They Sleep is a damn banger. <laughs> uh, you got Necrophiliac. Uh, you got Hardening of the Arteries is just insane. This album is just awesome, and Dave Lombardo really, really steps it up here. I mean, he's just bashing the living crap out of those drums uh, uh, with that awesome, he's got the awesome double bass sound in here, too, you know, that we didn't hear as quite as much in the previous ones. Uh, he just really comes into his own here, uh, and Tom Araya's vocals, I feel, are much better here, much more evil sounding, the, the guitar, um, from Jeff Hanneman and Kerry King. The writing is better. Uh, this album is just phenomenal. The only thing I would say that goes against it a little bit is the production value. I feel like if Hello Waits had better production value, this would be the best Slayer album ever. <laughs> uh, next up, we have an absolute monumental thrash masterpiece. This is the big one, folks. This is the album that Slayer is known for. Everybody knows this album. Everybody talks about it. And it's many people hail it as the greatest thrash metal album of all time. Now, that's why Rain and Blood obviously goes in Rain Supreme. There's no way it doesn't. <laughs> Uh, now, with this album, they moved to a bigger label, you know, a major label. Um, and that was Def Jam Recordings. Yes, the same al <laughs> label uh, as the Beastie Boys. <laughs> uh, so it's cool to have a metal band on the label now. So, and did you, do you think that softened Slayer up one bit? Hell no. Uh, the only thing it did is give Slayer better production value. <laughs> uh, so Slay, uh, Rain and Blood is everything that Hell Awaits is, except they have a better production value. And I'd say it, it speeds things up a little bit too, where as there are some slower songs in Hell Awaits and some fast songs in Hell Awaits, but Rain and Blood is just pure speed metal, uh, except... Except maybe the final track, Raining Blood, that might be, it starts a little slower, but gets fast. Um, but yeah, this album is, the best way to describe it is it's like a juggernaut. It's like a battering ram. It beats you to death and leaves you at the side of the road, just a broken, bloody carcass. <laughs> That's what it does. It's 20, it's only 29 minutes long. But it's, it's just absolutely savage. It's absolutely brutal as hell. It's fast as hell. It's evil as hell. 
it's just everything that Slayer is all about. <laughs> it's just incredibly evil. I mean, I've heard a lot of people say this is like the soundtrack to hell. And uh, that's a good way to put it. Um, the lyrics are insane. Very well written. Uh, amazing uh, playing. You know, the teamwork of Jeff Hanneman and Kerry King on guitar. That twin attack is just insane. Uh, Tom Mariah's vocals are better than ever. You know, everything works. Dave Lombardo's drumming is just phenomenal. This is just Slayer at their absolute peak of power. Um, yeah, it's it's absolutely relentless, too. It just never lets up. It's just nonstop bashing your brains in. Uh, every song on here is amazing. I mean, uh, obviously, Angel of Death. <laughs> Postmortem is one of my absolute favorites. Um, yeah, obviously the title track, Raining Blood. Um, yeah, Necrophobic. Uh, you got, oh man, it's just every song on Epidemic is probably the thrashiest song. Like, oh, that song is insane. Uh, oh, Altar of Sacrifice, probably the most blatantly satanic song in Slayer's history. It actually says praise hell Satan. <laughs> oh man, that song is so brutal. Altar of Sacrifice, baby. Oh, Rain and Blood is absolutely phenomenal. There's just no stopping it. With that being said, is how do you top Rain and Blood? What is the next step for Slayer after such a monumental thrash masterpiece? How do you follow it up? You follow it up with the equally amazing South of Heaven. Yes, another one for Reign Supreme. South of Heaven is phenomenal. <laughs> and it's different than Rain and Blood. It's much different. Uh, it's much slower. They slow down the pace. The songs are more scary and foreboding and ominous, you know, uh, and just as heavy in every way. See, that's the, th that's the thing. That's what makes South of Heaven so great is they still found a way to be that heavy and aggressive without being as fast. So, yeah, just one more way for a Slayer to be heavy, you know, and it absolutely is. Uh, South of Heaven is just filled with classics, you know, obviously the title track, um, yeah, Live Undead, Read Between the Lies. I mean, every song on here is the soul in there. Oh, man, this album is just loaded with banger after banger. Um to me, the best example of less is more from Slayer is Spill the Blood. I mean, that song is so evil. It sounds like you might be conjuring something. <laughs> like you might, you probably shouldn't be listening to it. But <laughs> something bad might happen when you listen to the song. <laughs> Raise the chalice and praise forevermore. <laughs> but yeah, South of Heaven is an absolute thrash masterpiece once again and will slayer continue this trend you got three albums already on reign supreme <laughs> we've had nothing below slaytanic and the next one is seasons of the abyss <laughs> another absolute classic in slayer's discography where does Seasons in the Abyss go? You better believe it goes on Reign Supreme. Another album with, with every single song is great. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'd say the best thing about Season in the Abyss is that it combines it combines Rain and Blood with South of Heaven. So you got some real fast thrashers in there, and you got some really slow six satanic uh themes like uh south of heaven so yeah it's like the best of both worlds and it's phenomenal <laughs> you got and you've got uh not only do you have some of the anti-religious stuff that slayer is known for but you got 
uh, the elements of war, uh, as written from Jeff Hanneman. You know, we saw some of that in Rain and Blood uh, with Angel of Death, you know, about the Nazi concentration camp. And you get some more war themes here with war ensemble, of course. And that's because Jeff Hanneman's father uh, fought in World War II against, against the Nazis. So uh, he was very interested in war. And uh, that shows here in uh, Seasons of the Abyss as well. Uh, yeah, absolute classic after classic. Dead skin mass. We're dealing with real life serial killer Ed Gein. Uh, so that was kind of Tom Araya putting his stamp on there. You know, he liked to uh, write a lot of, about like real life serial killers and stuff like that. Uh, so that's an absolute classic. That's my wife's favorite Slayer song, <laughs> Dead Skin Mask. <laughs> uh, obviously, War Ensemble. Um, I love Temptation. That song is so evil. That that riff in the middle of Temptation is like the most evil thing I've ever heard. <laughs> uh, and yeah, Born of Fire. I mean, absolute class. Hollow Point is just so heavy, so fast. Uh, man, Thrashtastic. <laughs> uh, Skeletons of Society. Absolute uh, mid-tempo classic, you know. Uh, yeah, loaded with obviously the title track is one of the greatest Slayer songs of all time. An absolute epic uh, Slayer ballad, if if you will. You know, not a ballad in the traditional sense, but a ballad in the Slayer sense. <laughs> uh, so, what do we have next? Next is the album that where I became a Slayer fan. And that is Divine Intervention, released in 1994. So Slayer moving into the 90s with Divine Intervention. Um, now, this is where Paul Bostaff came in and replaced Dave Lombardo. Dave Lombardo had left the band. Uh, so um, this one seems to, uh, you know, divide people for some reason. <laughs> Um, but to me, it's one of the most underrated in their canon. Uh, I am going to put Divine Intervention in Slaytanic, believe it or not. You know, I think it's a great album. I think it's it might be the most brutal Slayer album, uh, and that's saying a lot. It's really brutally heavy. I mean, it's absolutely a rage-filled Slayer album. It is relentless. It is a juggernaut, much like uh, Rain and Blood. You know, it's nonstop, like bash your brains in. You know, and it's extremely fast too. Um, I'd say the one downside to it is probably is the production value. Uh, I feel like the drums are maybe too loud. The guitars seem a little drowned out a little bit. You know, the production is is a little bit rough, uh, which is a little bit disappointing, but the album itself is great. The songs are great. I mean, you got, um, man, absolutely vicious rippers like uh, sex, murder, art. Uh, the opening track, Killing Fields, is one of my favorite Slayer songs of all time. That opening is amazing. Uh, yeah, it might have established Paul Bostaff. You know, it might be Slayer saying, hey, we got a new drummer. This drummer kicks ass. But I don't care. That song is awesome. That drum opening is incredible from Bo, Bo Staff. Um, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, you got Serenity and Murder. You got uh, 213, you know, based on Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, that's a sick song. Uh, SS3 is just sick as hell. Uh, and probably the song that nobody talks about, I think, is one of the most brutal, vicious Slayer song, and that is Mind Control. That song is so fast, so heavy, so brutal. <laughs> oh, man. And the title track is really cool as well, uh, Divine Intervention. So, yeah, I think uh, Divine Intervention is very, very underrated. Next up, we have Undisputed Attitude, which is Slayer's album of punk rock covers now. Punk rock is important to the Slayer sound because it's it's part of what made them, you know, because uh, 
Jeff Hanneman was a big punk rock fan, and you know he brought that element into Slayer. So there is some punk rock in Slayer, no doubt. Um, but I personally did not care too much for this one. Um, um, and that might be because I'm not really a huge punk rock fan per se. I like some here and there, a little here and there, but I wouldn't I wouldn't say I'm a big punk rock fan. That's probably why I don't care so much for this. Uh, it still sounds like Slayer, but then again, it doesn't. It sounds like punk rock at the same time. <laughs> so, uh, there is one original so uh, Slayer song on there, and that's Gemini that they recorded specifically for this album. And it's probably is the best song on there too, but I'm going to put this one, unfortunately, in Cold Cadaver. <laughs> Yeah, not one of my favorites, not one I go back to at all. You know, I've listened to it once or twice, you know, and I don't feel the need to listen to it again. So, yeah, it's not, it's definitely a forgettable album for me. Uh, next up is uh, another album that really divides fans. Obviously, I'd say it's probably more hated than anything, and that is... Diabolus in Music uh, from 1998, I believe it was. Uh, now, what do I think of Diabolus in Music? I love it. <laughs> I'm putting Diabolus in Music at Slaytanic, and I know that might be a shocker to a lot of people. I absolutely love Diabolus in Music. So, to me, Slayer, if they wanted to remain relevant, they had to do something to up date their sound and that's exactly what they did here on there even though nobody really sounds like slayer um people you know a lot of their brethren a lot of their peers had died off you know in the 90s because in the 90s you had the grunge rock movement with you know Alice in Chains and Nirvana and Pearl Jam and Stone Temple Pilots and all that stuff, you know, that was the music, the rock music scene at that time, you know. So how were they going to evolve, you know, and still be Slayer? That's hard, you know, and I feel like they accomplished that. They updated, they sound, they got more groove in there, more bass, uh, and they took a lot of influence from the music scene going on at that time, the heavy metal scene, especially. They had you had new metal going on at that time with Corn. You had bands like Machine Head. You had uh, the industrial metal going on at that time. Stuff like Fear Factory you had a Ministry, you know, <laughs> and you had. Uh, Marilyn Manson, too, going on. So I think uh, this takes a lot of influence from all those groups, as well as, you know, it still sounds like Slayer. So they managed to keep the Slayer sound and get influence from the music scene going on at that time, you know. I'd say another band who tried that and failed miserably was Morbid Angel with Illud Divinum and Sanus. They tried to do the same thing, only they failed miserably, where I feel Slayer succeeded, because I love a lot of these songs. I love uh, the song Bitter Peace. It's one of my favorite Slayer songs. Uh, it's my favorite intro of a Slayer song. The drum intro in that song from Paul Bostaff. So Paul Bostaff's work on this album is phenomenal. He just doesn't get enough credit. I mean, He's so creative in this album, you know, as Slayer is very creative on this album. This is definitely uh, a departure of sorts. It's definitely a more experimental album from Slayer, which, you know, a lot of, pan a lot of fans did not enjoy that. They, did, they want the same thing over and over, you know. Uh, that's, that's why I like this album. It's something different and something cool, and it, and it updated Slayer's sound. Uh, for the future. So I think it's important. If they hadn't made this album the way it came out, I feel like if they did another 
Divine Intervention or another Ring and Blood style album, they would have died off like so many of their peers did because they stayed stuck in the 80s, you know. Uh, yeah, so Divine Diabolus and Music, I love this. Uh, Stain of Minds, great track. Uh, I love In the Name of God was something very different for Slayer. That That's the, the song, I think, that got a lot of influence on like Marilyn Manson and stuff. It's still evil as hell, though. <laughs> Still heavy as hell, you know. I love the song Scrum, um, Death's Head, a lot of great stuff in there. You know, Screaming from the Sky is a great, like, slow paced thrasher, you know. Uh, and of course, Point was like, you know, we're not going to experiment on this one. We're just going to bash your brains in in classic Slayer style. <laughs> so the album ended with Point, which was like classic Slayer, you know. And it's a great freaking song. Next up, we had God Hates Us All, which came out on September 11th, 2001. Is that crazy or what? <laughs> oh, man. And as Carrie King once said, if that's not proof God hates us all, then what is, you know, what happened, obviously, with the World Trade Center in New York City? Uh yeah, what a, not the best time to have an album release uh, on that date, you know. But to me, uh, God Hates Us All was like the natural progression, uh, picking up where Diabolus and Musica left off. But at the same time, it kind of went to a different place as well. Uh, it was trying to be a little bit more uh, mainstream and continue with kind of the new metal industrial kind of sound but at the same time they were trying to pull elements from the classic slayer into that as well a little bit more um and once again you have paul bullstaff's awesome drumming um and i'd say the only thing that bothers me about god hates us all is uh I feel like Tom Araya's vocals are very shouty and screamy and not his best work, in my opinion. I feel like he screams too much. There's not a lot of variation in his vocals. And I don't like the foul mouth, you know, lyrics uh, at times seem a little silly, like the Fs and all that. <laughs> I feel like they're out of place. Like Slayer doesn't do that you know they hadn't really done much of that and they, they didn't swear that much in their songs it just kind of feels out of place like shouting the f-bomb every five seconds you know it just seemed out of place for me not that i care that they're cursing or anything it's just like it just seems out of place for slayer for me and it, at times it's a little bit silly like oh we're trying to be so heavy it doesn't make the song heavier because you curse you know um, but that being said, there's definitely some great songs on here. Bloodline is an absolute classic, an absolute thrash masterpiece. So there's definitely some awesome songs in here, like Disciple is great, you know. Um, I'd say the song Payback is kind of a little bit silly. Uh, Threshold is a real, is a killer thrasher, you know. So there's definitely some God Send Death is another great song. So there's definitely some great songs on here. I definitely enjoy it, but I don't quite put it at Slaytanic. I feel like uh, it still had that updated Slayer sound. It had that groove and it had some of those elements from new metal and industrial in there uh, that Diabolus and Musica had. But uh I don't feel it's quite as good as Diablos and Music, honestly, <laughs> but that's just my opinion. Uh, I do enjoy it, though. It's definitely a solid, solid Slayer album. Now, here's where I get a little bit mixed, and that is Christ Illusion. Never been a big fan of this album. I listened to it maybe twice. So that tells you right there, you know. I'd say every other Slayer album I've listened, I've listened to ad nauseum, but this one, I just never go back to it. You know, I just find it a little boring, quite frankly. <laughs> you know, it's just so I'm going to put sadly 
Christ Illusion at Cold Cadaver. Never really been a big fan of this album. I don't know what it is. It's like almost like they're trying too hard to become like the old Rain and Blood Slayer. It still had elements from Diabolus and God Hates Us All. Um, but it felt like they were trying to go back to the old school uh, Rain and Blood South of Heaven too much, you know. And it feels like they're trying too hard, you know. And they don't need to, you know, <laughs> just keep doing what they were doing. They felt like they were doing a good job. Um, but this, this to me felt like a few steps back, you know. I, I just didn't like it. Even though this saw the return of the original drummer, Dave Lombardo, came back to the band. So at this point, they had all the original members. But still, there's just something about it. Like, as I'll, I'll give you an example. Cult is a song that I feel is Slayer trying way too hard to be like, Rain and Blood style Slayer, you know, as Tom is singing real fast, it's almost like to the point where he sounds like he's rapping. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> uh, I will say, Flesh Storm is a definite ripper, though. That that's a ripper of a song. Um, but other than that, you know, it just feels like they're re they're rehashing old territory. You know, they're trying to. Some of the some of the riffs sound like they're literally from South of Heaven or you know Rain and Blood. It's like they're trying too much, trying too hard to be so evil and so uh, satanic and so they're trying to be like old Rain and Blood era Slayer, and it it shows. They're trying too hard. I, I just don't care for it. it. Just doesn't work for me. Ah. Uh, all right, so next up is World Painted Blood, which I thought was a slight step up from Christ Illusion. Uh, I thought it was a little more in line with, like, God Hates Us All and stuff. Uh, I thought it was definitely a step up. There are a few cool songs in there. Uh, Psychopathy Red. Uh, um yeah, I love Hate Worldwide, I think, is a classic Slayer tune. And uh, and the title track, World Painted Blood. So I'm going to put World Painted Blood, how appropriate in Spills Blood. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely a step up from uh, Christ Illusion, but still not one of my favorites. But it's it's good. It's solid. Uh, and last but not least in my opinion is repentless uh the final slayer album don't know if we'll ever get another slayer album that remains to be seen but to date this is the final this is the last album that slayer did as a band um and this is the album that they did after jeff hanneman passed away uh, with Gary Holt coming in uh, from Exodus to replace Jeff Hanneman. And you had Paul Bostaff returning to the band once again, because Paul, because uh, Dave Lombardo left once again. They had disputes, they had creative differences, they had they were arguing over money, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, once again. But a very welcome return because. I absolutely love Paul Bostaff, and it's very tough for me. Do I prefer Paul Bostaff or Dave Lombardo? That's really tough for me because I think they're both phenomenal. So it's it. So as long as it's one or the other, I'm happy. <laughs> you know, if they brought somebody different in, I would have been bummed. Um, but I actually really enjoy. Repentless, and I am going to put it in, believe it or not, Satanic. <laughs> it's going to be a surprise to a lot of people, I know. I enjoy Repentless I, quite a bit. I, I do go back to it. I enjoy it. There's some killer songs on there. The title track, Repentless, is great. I love Implode. Uh, I absolutely love When the Stillness Come. That's a great uh, kind of slow, dark, scary-sounding classic slayer song i love that uh and carrie king himself said that he was trying to write a song kind of in the style of jeff hanneman something jeff hanneman would do because uh, jeff hanneman was so good at writing that those slow menacing scary haunting songs and i think 
he did a great job. Uh, this album slams, man. I, I enjoy Tom Araya's vocals here. I think he's... Uh, I think it actually adds to it the fact that Tom Araya is older and he sounds a little bit more grizzled and rough and gruff. And uh, I think that adds to the album, honestly. So, yeah, I think uh, Repentless was a great way to go out on going out on top, you know, with a great album, kicks ass. And, uh, you know, Gary Holt does a great job, too. He has some ripping ass solos in here. He didn't contribute to the writing, but he did do some ripping ass solos on there. So, uh, yeah, I love the production value on Repentless. Sounds great. Yeah. I really enjoy Repentless. So Repentless is in at Slaytanic. We have no deadly duds. So to me, Slayer has never made an absolute shit fest. You know, they've never made a piece of crap album ever. So yeah, that is the ranking of Slayer's album history. Uh, Slayer's discog discography. Uh, yeah, there you have it, folks. And thank you for joining me, Sean Patrick Urshan in Heavy metal talk. Tune in and rock on. Have a great one, folks. Peace out.